Is this possibly the best on-screen adaptation of Superman? Guys, we are the Comic Lads. I'm Merlin. I'm Thomas. And we're continuing our series of reviewing all of the superhero slash comic movies we can. We started with Adam West's Batman 1966 movie, and now we're on to Christopher Reeve's Superman movie in 1978. Oh yeah. Everything that's been coming out recently, just like superhero movie after superhero movie. Yeah, yeah. And, like, I was thinking going into these early episodes that I would probably hate him. Yeah. Just based off of, like, writing alone. But it's such a nice change of pace from the know, stuff that's been coming out recently, it's dude. It's so yeah. refreshing. Oh. I enjoyed this movie exponentially more than I have for the last three Marvel movies, I yeah. think. Superman 1978. This follows, really, the basic storyline origin of Superman. Mm -hmm. uh, and I say basic, but it's also kind of incredible. It's the blueprint. It, it is the blueprint. Like, you can't do better than this origin story. Yeah. And they knocked it out of the park, dude. A lot of superhero movies these days will just straight up skip over an origin story. Or they'll try to put their own twist on the character, which will kind of blur the line between... Are they actually a faithful representation of that character or not? And we're all for, like, you know, artist expression and all that. Mm -hmm. I know we have our... We, I definitely have my gripes with Tom Holland's Spider-Man in certain regards just because <laughs> Iron Man Jr., I'm sorry. But this really... Superman 1978 really feels like if you didn't know anything about Superman going into the movie... Now you know him. You get to see why he's such a great character. And this movie just made me feel so good inside because recent years have just poisoned everyone's minds into thinking that Superman's like fucking hokey and lame and stupid yeah. and it's like there is nothing boring about someone who will always try to do his best and to help wherever he can yeah Superman's not about like oh fucking he can lift a billion trillion gajillion pounds like wait that's not but that's not what you're watching for yeah you know you're watching to see the best of what a person can be it's really one of those characters that, like, kind of building off of what you're saying, the most fundamental trait about them that you're attracted to in a character is just their sense of morality mm -hmm. and just always trying to do good things. Obviously, there's characters that kind of, some could argue that are more interesting because they blur the line between what's right and what's wrong. But the characters like Captain America, like Superman, without hesitation, do what's right because it's right to them. Yeah is, like, like purely what I feel like being a hero is. You know it's, what I mean? And it's just incredible to see, because you don't see it anymore. Now it's just like, oh, I'm edgy, and like, oh, you, you're, yeah. you're threatened my mother. I'm like, this is not yeah. Superman, dog. Like, no, Superman saves cats out of trees. If you don't like it, you're whack. Yeah. That's my take. Let's yeah. talk about the movie, though. Yeah, let's talk about the movie. <laughs> let's, let's go through the plot. It, it goes very much into the traditional storyline. Krypton is about to implode. Jor-El, played by motherfucking Marlon Brando. It's so good. I dude. cannot freaking believe Marlon Brando plays Jor-El in this movie. And he crushes him. They crush everything about him except for his outfit. Now, the outfit is fire from a distance, but then you get close up <laughs> well, and you see that it's foil. It's like a baking sheet. <laughs> what are they doing? <laughs> so Jor-El tries to warn all of Krypton that it's about to end. Classic. They don't listen to him as usual. They all think he's crazy. They think he's nuts. They don't see literally that like the giant red sun is like inches from the planet. Don't make any sense. sense. How do they not think that... Oh no, we're just in a transitional orbit. Yeah, we're what? Yeah, yeah, the the or, the planet's orbit is shifting. Three Bro, seconds the, later, the <laughs> sun is a hundred feet away. What are you talking about? I will say, mm. the spaceship that they send Clark in, so fire. Oh my god, so cool. It looks, it looks like a little Christmas ornament or yeah. something. Yeah, it does. So following this, Clark lands to Earth and. I have to say, I think actually the first 45 minutes of this movie are my favorite part of it before we even see Superman. All the Smallville stuff, yeah. Because all the Smallville stuff perfectly lay out the kind of character that Clark is going to be. Yeah. And that's just, like we were saying before, just a good person does the right thing. And I especially, actually I think my favorite scene in the movie... Is the speech with Jonathan Kent? 
Yeah, I know. You can do all these amazing things, and sometimes you think that you will just go bust unless you can tell people about it. Huh? You are here for a reason. But I do know one thing. It's not to score touchdowns. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. <laughs> I'm ready to do it. It was like 15 seconds. Yeah. And I was like, I was listening to it, and I was like, yes. They get it. I don't know who the cinematographer was. I do. His name is Jeffrey Unsworth. I looked it up. He was cooking during this movie, but especially in the small shop. This was his last movie, dude. He died in post, when they were doing post. Like... Some of the shots look like a freaking painting. Like, how was this made back then? I it's don't shot know. better than some of the movies now. I'm like, what drones are you using for these I shots? Know. One of the toughest parts in the whole movie is, like, the inevitable death of Jonathan Kent. Such an incredible, incredible, brutal scene. This isn't a nitpick on the movie. It's more just the origin of Superman. Okay. I do kind of like the iterations where both of them... Of course. You know... Like the cartoons Jonathan and stuff. Jonathan and Martha are still alive. I agree. And I think that's just because purely we're so used to superhero characters becoming heroes from, like, tragedy and people yeah. dying and a father figure, a mother figure, or both dying. Yes. And I kind of like the idea of Superman as Superman because he is just so good. It doesn't allude to the fact that Jonathan dies that leads to Clark being Superman. Yeah. But the speech he gives him, like, seconds before he dies, which is, like, I know you meant to do greater things, yeah. does kind of make me feel like that's the theme they're pulling us toward. Absolutely. And a part of me is, like, damn, I would have been sick to just see him, like, happy with both of his parents, you know what I mean, while still doing the good thing. I, I agree, man. I, I really do prefer it when they don't, like, saddle Jonathan Kent with the heart attack and they let him, yeah. like, in certain continuities stay alive. Yeah. It's like, tough. Yeah. It's tough. After Jonathan Kent has his heart attack, we never see Martha for the rest of the movie. Yeah. Which is kind of like... Kind of whack. Okay, like they literally just say goodbye to each other. Clark disappears for 13 years in yeah. the Fortress of Solitude. Oh my god. And then, like, and then comes to Metropolis. Yeah. So I don't know. He, he goes to the Fortress, studies how to be Superman for <laughs> like 12, 13 years, and then rejoins humanity. How was he not insane dude i don't know bro <laughs> he's been talking to a floating marlon brando head for the last 12, 12 years, years. <laughs> like dude should be fucking punching the air right now but it's okay when he gets to um metropolis the heart of the story does shift from the kens to his love interest with lois lane yeah. which is great it's amazing but raunchy what color underwear am i wearing pink Oh my god, like, I get it. Mm -hmm. It was a little bit too horny for me, though. Like, well, some of the just, things they were saying. You can just, like, tell that Christopher Reeve and Margot Kidder were so down. Like, it's scary. Do you know what it is that you do to me? Can you picture the things I'm thinking of? Chemistry. Like, undoubtable chemistry. Oh, yeah. Uh, and it was just very convincing. It was too convincing that the raunchiness kind of was like, whoa, well, should yeah, I be watching like, this right now? Am I watching like Superman XXX or something? <laughs> like, what, what's happening? Here? Yeah, what like, website am I streaming <laughs> this on right now? All right, I guess it's time to talk about Lex Luthor, who I was like, I was excited to see because I feel like everybody talks up Gene Hackman as Lex Luthor. Eh. It's really weird because Lex Luthor nowadays is treated very like... Very cynical, unforgiving, no mercy kind of attitude. Yeah, completely, like, serious, like, exactly. stone-cold businessman. Exactly. Like, we'll find your greatest weakness or fear and exploit you with it. Yeah, in, like, two seconds without you even knowing. Exactly. And Lex Luthor in this movie is just kind of a buffoon. Like, let's yeah. be real. It's Everything he says is mad funny, but, yeah. like, are you playing the Joker? You know? Like, yeah. I don't know what they were going for. They made it, like so hokey and goofy especially with his yeah. like two cronies that he has Doesn't throughout the whole movie sense. he just has these like dumbass henchmen yeah. and henchwoman that like are like scooby-doo characters yeah. that's the best way I can describe, like, <laughs> lex luther as yeah. well too is like he's a scooby-doo villain that just doesn't wear a mask as the movie goes on he actually has no motivation for even going after superman like no. he's hiding out from the police and he reads about superman and it's like, well, I guess I gotta kill him now. And it's like, wait, what? 
What are you talking about? Like, <laughs> yeah. he hasn't done anything to you. Mm-hmm. We do get one really freaking cool scene with him where, that you pointed out is very Lex Luthor from what we know now okay. and in the comics, where he hijacks a frequency. Oh, to reach, dude! To reach Superman. So Clark is just chilling in the Daily Planet, and suddenly he there's like this ear piercing ringing. sound, and you see these dogs start to like lose it all over the city. Yeah, and like and Lex Luthor is talking directly to him, and basically saying like, "Hey," and like you're the only person on Earth like that's not a dog that can hear this. Exactly. So like this is the only way I can talk to you. Yeah, that is definitely the time where Lex Luthor feels the most villainous in yes. this movie because that's just like super freaking cool. It's peak. It's like yeah. perfect Lex Luthor. <laughs> and this is where. Where we actually get into Lex's full plan, which is to hijack two nuclear weapons, or if they're not nuclear, they're big ass bombs. They're five hundred megaton missiles. Yeah. He targets like the San Andreas fault line. It's where like I think like t- the two tectonic plates meet, like in the state of California. So he's he wants to shoot the missile there, so it'll knock the western part of the plate into the ocean and then the eastern part of the fault will be his new west coast on which he owns all the land called Casta del Lex, I think. <laughs> <laughs> or Costa. Costa, fuck? sorry. Cost, Costa del Lex. <laughs> uh. I don't know, like, it's like, we were enjoying the movie so much, and then it became, like, a Batman 66 plot at the end. Yeah, and then after that, like, the movie does kind of just become ridiculous. At any time it switches to Lex and his cronies, like, doing anything related to their plan, I'm, like, fast asleep, bro. I'm, like, I'm in the Odin sleep, bro. I'm, like, just (laughs) dead. Yeah. Like. Yeah. So... So, these two missiles are headed for their destination. (laughs) (laughs) And Superman, at this point, is, like, drowning in a pool. (laughs) An indoor pool. Yeah, because Lex Luthor puts, like, the chunk of kryptonite on a chain, like, around his neck. And he, like... Hard-ass chain, though. It's fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would definitely rock that. Agreed. And he's just, like, slowly sinking, kind of, like, awkwardly drowning. But it's, like, a five-foot, like, pool, though. I know. (laughs) <laughs> and he makes it up to the surface of the water, basically. Barely. Yeah, barely. <laughs> but in time to see one of Lex Luthor's henchmen girls, Tess Mocker. <laughs> you know, he gives the whole, like, uh, oh, you gotta do the right thing kind like, of speech. He's like drowning. Please! Like, millions, millions of people are millions gonna... Millions of people! <laughs> He's kind of awkwardly sputting to himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she's like, okay, I'll let you go. But you have to promise to save my mom first. Because she, like, lives in one of the missile destinations. It's like, lady, there's two nukes going towards the fucking coast. I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna stop the nuke, yeah. or I'm not. Yeah, I'm not whatever. flying to New Jersey and, and like, going to Mrs. <laughs> Mrs. Tessmacher's house and getting Just her out, Just the holder bro. type. Like. Right before she takes off the chain, the kryptonite chain. Mm-hmm. He's, he's, un- his, he's unconscious. He's barely conscious. He's unconscious. Like, sputtering words at this point. Yeah. And she kisses him. And you're like, well, no. Yeah. You don't do that literally fucking ever. And he comes back to consciousness and he's yeah. like, why did you do that? Yeah, he's like, Why'd you, why did you kiss me first? And what did she say? She says, well, I, I was afraid I wouldn't get the chance after. What? Yeah. It's like, dude, if the roles were, like, if genders were reversed. Put, put some cuffs on Superman yeah. right away, Bad. dog. Uh, bad. Okay, so after that extremely problematic and icky scene, Superman finally flies off. There's no kryptonite anymore. He's going to stop the missiles. And because he promised Tess Mocker, he stops the one going to New Jersey. New Jersey's safe. But there's still a missile going for Cali, where Lois is there for a story. Superman doesn't make it in time. The missile absolutely obliterates the fault line the western cali starts sinking into the ocean yeah and lois just gets trapped like lois's car literally gets trapped like in the fault line (laughs) and rocks and dirt and shit are like burying her and she's getting like she's in this car suffocating trying gasping for air getting buried for like (laughs) 
three <laughs> scenes. Like, they cut back between no, her and dude. Superman, like, four or five times. Like, on screen time, she's getting buried alive for, like, five minutes. No, while, like, five while minutes. While Superman dude. is, like, saving different people and blocking up a dam that's broken. Uh, she's, like, literally, and she's screaming, like, gutturally. She's, yeah, like, she's like, ah! And, like, dirt's falling on her. And yeah, and to where, uh, when it gets to the next scene that she's drowning, she can't scream anymore because she's like... Yeah. <laughs> and by the time Superman gets to her, she's just covered up in dirt. She's literally just... Up to in, her eyeline. She's, she's just there. Buried alive. No, nah, she's... Like, she's dead. And uh, and then we found out that she is dead. She is Superman dead. gets her out, and she's dead. He's too... He's, like, a couple minutes... Probably, like, five minutes yeah. too late. And yeah. she's dead, and then... <laughs> and then Superman goes full sicko mode. He gives the most barbarian scream I've ever seen. He goes... <laughs> and flies up into the atmosphere. And then... What the <laughs> and then... And then... He's so pissed. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. Wait, wait. Can I just say? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dog, you met this girl two days ago. <laughs> like, two days is not enough to justify a... <laughs> Oscar-worthy scream. He flies into space and then flies around the Earth a million, like a million times in the opposite direction. And doing that a million times, like turns back time to like a couple minutes before Lois would have died and then he's just there to help her out with her car with a big smile and you're like dude you're fucking traumatized she just like died in your arms you're talking about that i'm thinking more like dog just fucking turn back time i know it's what the so hell stupid. just happened <laughs> doesn't make sense lois gets buried and superman flies so fast around the earth that he reverses her death yeah i'm like that's the worst thing in the whole movie for sure yeah i think what's kind of weird about that ending is that it would be the same ending if, if he, he had just, just got gotten there. there in time to save her. Or if she, like, you know, as he thinks she's dead, she, like, <coughs> coughs yeah. up and then she's alive. And then he just hugs her, you know, and, and you're like, this is a nice moment. And it's kind of like, okay, you just broke Superman. He literally became Injustice Superman. Yeah. Turned time back and, like, wiped his tears and, and like, went to see, like, alive Lois again. And was like, hey! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah, it's it's bizarre. What? It's bizarre, but it's also like, okay, like, Superman just lost all of his kind of credibility, too, at the same time. Because it's like, okay, so now anytime Superman runs into a prom, he'll just scream <laughs> he'll really just, hard. He'll become the Flash and he'll turn back time. He'll scream and then turn back time. With his power set, he's already so broken that yeah. it's like, I would have just preferred him to just save the day as he is instead of yeah, just, suddenly introducing this random thing at the very last five minutes of the movie. Like, oh yeah, by the way, I also can control time. Yeah, and it's like, listen, if it was a modern superhero movie and they explained that fucking Superman is fast enough to go into the speed force, speed force like the Flash, whatever, pop, 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 I don't mind. Yeah. But it's the fact that he does it by turning the Earth in the other direction, which would end the world. Do yeah. you know what that would do for the Earth that's moving at fucking, like, 800 million miles, whatever, per yeah. second, to go in the other direction, bro? Yeah, it's bad. Every single person on Earth, every living thing on Earth, is dead instantly from that. Yeah, it just, <laughs> it, honestly, it's like a sour way to end the movie. Extremely. Because it's a freaking great movie, and then they end it with that, yeah, and it's... then Lex gets taken to jail... And he pulls off a wig. And you're like, why weren't you freaking bald for the whole movie? Yeah, and he goes, I'm Lex Luthor, mastermind criminal. And it's like, okay, dog. And you're like, you're going to be really popular at the prison for and sure. And also, like, he, Superman takes him to prison without any due process. He doesn't, like, get him arrested. No, he just nothing. flies him to a penitentiary, drops <laughs> him there, and then Lex confesses, I'm criminal mastermind. And you're yeah. like, well, you're a moron. Yeah. I also just wanted to mention... This was, like, 
the most out of pocket ridiculous thing in the whole movie. Yeah. So there's like a montage where Superman is, it's just showing how Superman is helping Metropolis and saving all kinds of people. He's stopping bank robbers. He's saving planes from falling out of the sky. And then he goes to save this cat out of a tree for this little girl. And you're like, oh, that's awesome. He saves the cat, hands it to the girl. She's like, thanks, Superman, whatever. And then she goes in her house and you don't see. You can just see the open door of the house and you just hear the audio. And she says, like, Mom, Mom, this man in a blue shirt and a red cape saved, me, saved the, the, the cat out of the tree, whatever. And, her, and you just hear her mom go, Haven't I told you to stop telling lies? Haven't I told you to stop telling lies? Yeah, you hear a smack. You hear a fucking... And you're like, <laughs> this girl so, is like four. It's so weird because that whole sequence, it's so wholesome. And then it happens and there's still like, like the Superman theme going off in the background. Ba, 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 and then you just hear, ba, ba, ba. <laughs> it's like, what in the hell? Speaking of the Superman theme. It's the best thing literally ever. John Williams is the ultimate chef. Uh, yeah. Sorry, James Gunn. Like you're either going to have to ask John Williams to make another one or just like use this one because yeah, it's perfect. It is. It makes me flawless. It makes me smile. Yeah. That's all. That's all you can say about it. It makes yeah. me smile. It, it makes, makes me, me smile. It makes me feel happy. Yeah. One of the great thing about Superman's character is the difference in how he is as Superman versus how he is as Clark Kent. Yeah. The way Christopher Reeves plays Clark, it's, it's just perfect. It's incredible. He, I feel like I'm watching the animated series. Yes. And he just perfectly has that awkward stumbling around, doesn't know how to talk to women, doesn't know how to even get into an elevator properly. That's fucking Superman, dude. Yeah. It's... Superman to a T. Yeah. If Man of Steel's Henry Cavill had more of that, we'll talk about it more when we get to that review. Yeah. It's not Henry Cavill's fault. It's the fault of it's the not, writer. It's not and, at all. And, Henry Cavill's yeah. amazing. Yeah. yeah. Visually, he's a perfect Superman. Yes. And in ta he's amazingly talented. Mm -hmm. But it's that, that aspect that really brings Superman back to Earth. If the whole movie was just Clark Kent in the Superman fit, interacting with Lois, yeah, sure, it might be enjoyable, but sure. it's missing that human element that just brings it all back down to Earth and just makes you, like, genuinely smile and care for the character. Couldn't have put it better myself. That's it, guys. Yeah. That's our review. Perfect representation of the character. I'm super excited to see Superman 2 because I've also read from certain people yeah. that it is actually better than Superman 1. I don't know what the case is with that, but we will see in we'll the next see. episode. Yeah. If you guys enjoyed, please drop a subscribe. Please! Please! <laughs> like the video. If you guys have any opinions on this movie yourself, please write them in the comments below. We'd love to check them out. Mm -hmm. And we'll see you on the next one, guys. Thanks for watching.